Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 9, Worksheet Number 5, still talking about factoring uh, polynomials. Okay, so today we're actually looking at uh, some trinomials here where we have three terms. And we begin, first of all, with the area model, and then we're going to move from the area model down to just without the area model, just regular expressions. So with the area model, knowing that I was given this, right, that's what I started with, or that's what I should say. Anyway, I'm going to try to factor that out into two kind of uh, two groups. So we can start with a 2w here and a w, and I do that because I know I have to get to 2w squared. So I have 2w times w gives me 2w squared. Over here I have 15, so that's fine because it matches that number there. So I need to think of two numbers I can multiply together that get me to 15, and then I'm going to figure out this diagonal portion here. Remember this diagonal portion is going to be connected to our middle term, the 13w. So numbers that multiply together to get 15 are things like 5 and 3, and of course there's 15 and 1. So for now, let's just go ahead and put a 5 here and a 3 there. And this is just really kind of a guess and check kind of method, all right? So if I do 5 and 3, I end up with a 5 times 2 is 10w, and 5 times, I'm sorry, 3 times w is 3w. So in the middle, I end up with a 3w and a 10w, and because I want a 13w, I need these both to be positive. They have to be a positive and a positive. So in order for that to happen, I put a plus here and a plus there. So that my two factor uh, expressions are gonna be 2w plus three times w plus five. All right, and that's really the idea behind today's lesson. Let's take a look at the next one here, number two. We end up with a 5a squared. The only way to get to 5 is 5 times 1. So we'll put a 5a here and just an a there. It's like a 1a. When I look at the 8, the 8 can be, I can get to an 8 by looking at 8 times 1, 4 times 2. I have a couple different options here. So I'm going to have to multiply something over here in order to get to, I'm looking to get to a negative 22a on that diagonal piece there. So a couple options, I could do an eight and a one, but if I put an eight right here, then eight times five is gonna give me 40. That's pretty large if I wanna end up with a negative 22. So I'm not sure if I wanna do the eight right there. If I did a one, I'd have five, not bad, but the eight would come here, but eight plus five is gonna be 13, not where I wanna to get to. So let's try the four. If I put a four here, I know four gets me to 20, because four times five is 20a, and that leaves me with a two over here, and two times a is two a. So at this point, I have a two a plus a 20 a. All right, or I have two a 20 a. I need to get to a minus, I should say. Shouldn't put, shouldn't put plus there. Because I want to get to a negative 22 a, this needs to be a negative two a, and that needs to be a negative 20 a. So I need to have this be a negative and a negative. In order for that to happen, because this five a is positive, then the four has to be negative. And because this a is positive, then the 2 has to be negative. And I need to double check my corner down here. A negative 4 times a negative 2 equals a positive 8. So that's going to be just fine. So we're going to have 5a minus 2, our first term, times a minus 4, our second term. Let's take a look now at number 3. Okay, number 3, once again, I have a 5y squared in the front. So I'll put a 5y and a y. It's pretty much all I can do with a 5y and a y to break that up. Next, I have the 14, which I need to put down here. There's the 14. Sorry, I should write my 5y squared there. 14, I can get by doing 7 times 2, 14 times 1. Those are all good choices there. Let's start with a smaller one. I know I need to do something where the, my diagonals are going to come together and get me up to a negative 17. That's my goal here. So if I was to put a 7 here, for example, that would give me 35. That's a little bit too large for what I'm looking for, seeing how I want to get to 17. So that's not going to work there. So let's put the 2 there. I'm going to put a 2 here, and that gets me up to 10. It's not too bad, 10y. And if I put the 2 there, then I'm going to put the 7 here, and that gets me to 7y. So combined, I have a 7y and a 10y. I notice that I need it to be negative, so this needs to be a negative 7 and a negative 10 in order to get to negative 17y. So a negative and a negative, and the only way to do that, we have a negative two and a negative seven. And just checking our corner here, if that's gonna be positive, which it is, a negative times a negative is a positive, that's gonna work out. So our term will be five y minus seven times y minus two. 
All right, I'm gonna leave number four there for you on your own. Let's come down to the fact of these ones um, without the boxes, right? So same idea here. We're gonna take this number and without the box, I'm gonna factor it like so. I'm gonna go ahead and do a two X and an X because that's the only way to break up the two. And now I have to consider my options to get to negative 27. To get to negative 27, I have things like nine times three is the first thing that comes to mind. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of plug that in there. I know that I need to get on, end up with middle terms that get to three X. Now my middle terms are found by multiplying the outsides together and the insides together to find out what the middle term is gonna be. So knowing I need to get to three, if I put a nine right here, for example, I'd end up with 18. That's pretty large, but seeing how I wanna to get to three. So let's not start with a nine there. Let me start with a three right here. And that's gonna give me a three X, or sorry, a six X. And if I put the three there, then I use the three. Let's use the nine right here. And that gives me a nine X in the middle. So my outside terms is six X. My middle inside terms is nine X. I wanna be at a three X. So if this is positive and this is negative, then I'm gonna end up with the three X I'm looking for. So if I need the nine X to be positive, then I'll put a plus right there. And the six X to be negative, I put a negative right there. Now let me double check real quick. I need to make sure that the last terms when they multiply together are gonna to work. Nine times a negative three equals a negative 27. That's gonna work out just fine. So that's how we do that one right there. Number seven, same idea. I'm gonna break this up into two terms like so. I have a seven Y and a Y because no other way to get to a seven. For the 30, I do have some options. I know I can do 30 times one, 15 times two, and I can do six times five. For my middle term, I know I'm gonna to have to have a 29, okay? I also can notice right away that I have a negative 30. Because that's a negative 30, that means one of these terms has to be a minus. I'm not sure which one yet, but one of them needs to be minus, and one's gonna be a plus. Now, 30, 29 is a pretty big number, okay? But if I use 30, if I put 30 over here, I'd end up with 210, that's too big. If I put 30 there and seven there, I'd have 37, or I'd have 23, depending if I subtracted or added. So that's not quite gonna work. If I did 15 and two, I could almost put a two right here, right? And a 15, and you might think to yourself, well, that's pretty cool because that's 14 and a 15, and those do add together to get me 29, right? So it's looking pretty good. The problem is that would be a plus and a plus, and when you check this outside term, 15 times two is a positive 30, and we need a negative 30. So while that almost works, it's just not gonna be good enough. So we can't use the 15 and the two. So let's take a look at the six and the five. If I put a six here and a five here, I know that seven times five is 35, and then six Y is six Y, and 35 minus six is gonna equal 29 Y. So that means that the five needs to be positive to get a positive 35 and this needs to be negative to get a negative six Y. And double check this outside, negative six times five is a negative 30, that works. So that becomes my solution there. Number nine, I'm gonna factor that again. Here we go, same idea, just lots of practice here, right? We have two M and M, and for 21, I can use a seven and a three is my first guess. I know I need to get down to one M, so I'm gonna put a three there because that gives me six M and I'll put my seven there because that gives me seven in because I wanna have plus one left. I'm gonna make that positive and that negative. So my positive seven in means put the plus sign there and my negative six means put the negative sign there. Double check these last terms, negative seven times negative three is still negative 21, so we're all good. And then the last one on this page here, we have four B squared minus B minus five. So with the four B squared, okay, we could, this could be either four times one or two times two. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and just put four B and see what happens, all right? And just try it out here just for now and hope that works. On this other side, I have a five. If I was to put a five, is just five and one. If I was to put a one here and a five there, then I end up with a four B and a five B. Because I need a negative 1B, 
then I want to make sure that the 5 is negative and the 4 is positive. So I make that a negative 5 to make it a negative 5b, that a positive to get a positive 4b, and check my last terms, negative 5 times positive 1 is negative 5, and so that's going to work out. And that's what we have for number 11. Okay, let's flip it over and look at the back side here, starting at number 13. Number 13, we are going to break this apart. All right, and 6 can become 6 times 1 or 3 times 2. 36 can become uh, lots of things, right? We can do 6 times 6, 9 times 4. So when you start getting these problems, it gets a little more complicated because there are more options to work with. So it might take a little bit of time just to figure it out, but that's why checking it is very important. I'm going to go ahead and break my 6x squared up into 3x and 2x. All right, I don't know if that's right or wrong. I just feel like ah, I'm gonna break it up if I can because usually that's the way things tend to be written, okay? All right, so that works fine so far. Now let's look at this negative 36. I know I need to work on using these terms here to get to a negative 36, but I have to pay attention to the middle parts, right? I'm aiming for a 19. So let's say I use the sixes real quick. If I use a six here and a six there, I'd have 18 and 12. I don't see any way I could put 18 and 12 together to get to 19. I just don't see that happening. So I'm gonna erase the sixes and try a nine and a four. If I try a nine and a four, now I have a 12 and I have an 18. Well, 12 and 18 don't work together to get me 19, but because these are different numbers, I can reverse the order and I could put a four here and a nine there. That gets me a 27 and an eight. 27 minus 8 actually happens to be 19. So I think I found the numbers that I want. Now let's give them the proper sign. 3x and a positive 9 give you a positive 27. And a negative 4 and a positive 2 give you that negative 8. All right, so we have 6x squared. Yeah, we don't fork it out. So that's what we have. That's it for there. Okay. Now push pause, hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. So here we go on this number 15. We're gonna take the seven in and the 30. Now the seven's kind of nice because I know I can only do it with seven and one. But now I have to play with the 30. 30 could be, again, it could be six times five, something like that. I'm gonna probably lean towards more of these kind of middle numbers when I have a, a number out here that's already pretty large. Knowing I, get, I have to get to 29, but I can't go huge. If I did 30 times one, that's just too big, right? Just, again, just thinking, you know, what, what's in my head. So if I put a six right here, for example, I know I would be at 42. That's pretty big. 42 minus a five, can't get to 29. So let me reverse that order real quick and see what I could get. So if I put the six here and the five there, now I have 35 and six. Well, 35 minus six gets you to 29. So I need to get a positive 35. So seven and five need to be positive and a negative six. So I put that right there. And I double check the out last, last terms, negative six times positive five is still negative 30. So that's gonna be what I need. Number 17 again, all right, the three is just gonna be a three and a P, and the 21 is probably gonna be seven and three. I know I'm looking for a 16 in the middle, so if I put a seven right here, I'd have 21, and then I could do plus three minus three, that gets me 18. That's not gonna quite work out, is it? So let's reverse that order real quick. Okay, put a seven here and a three there. So now I have a nine, and a 7p because I need a total of 16p. I'm going to add those together so they're both positive. Check the last term is a positive 21. That works. All right, for these next ones here, it says factor completely. And what's important to remember here is that I can do some, I can take something out and factor something out of every turn sometimes. And if I do that first, it's a lot easier to work with the factoring. So in this case, I notice that these are all multiples of 5. So I can initially take a five out of every term. So 25 divided by five is five, I'll keep the x squared, minus 35 divided by five is seven, keep the x, and 30 divided by five is six. 
So I'm going to keep the 5 on the outside, and now I need to factor what's left. I have a 5x, so I'll keep a 5x and an x. No problem there. And I know I have a minus 6. I'm looking to try to get to a negative 7x with my outsides and insides. So 6 can be 6 times 1 or 3 times 2. But knowing that I already have a 5, if I put a 6 and a 1 there, I end up with a 5x and a 6x. Well, can I put those together to make a 7, negative 7? Mm, I'm going to go with, nope, no way of doing that. Just not going to work out. So let's just erase that real quick. And let's try something different. Let's try a 3 and a 2. If I put a 3 there and a 2 there, I end up with a 10x and a 3x. I want to get a negative 7x in my middle terms. So if I make that a negative 10 and make this a positive 3, negative 10 plus 3 is going to be negative 7. So I'm going to make that negative to get my negative 10, positive 3 right there. So I have 5 times 5x five plus 3 times x minus 2. Number 21, looking at this one, I can take a 2 out of everything. So I have 5p squared plus 13p plus 8. Again, the 2's on the outside, and now we're going to break this apart. I'm going to do a 5p and a p, and I have the 8. Now this one, it's interesting for me at least, I'm going to put an 8 there and a 1 there. Okay, and the reason is because when I started, when I looked at it, I went, wait, 8 plus 5 is 13. So if I split them up like that, I have 5p plus 8p equals 13p. So this is just going to be 5p plus 8 and p plus 1. All right, number 23. On this one here, we can take a 2 out of everything. So I get 2, 25x squared minus 4. All right, and now we take a look at this part here. And this becomes 5x and 5x. And I can do a 2 and a 2. And what we have is this is going to be the difference of squares. Because I have a square, square, square. So I did 5x plus 2 and 5x minus 2. I don't want a middle term, right? So that gives me a negative 10x and a positive 10x, which go away. All right, looking down here at the bottom, just a quick little review. I'll do one of these for you real quick. So when we review this here, when we multiply this together, we have 6 times a negative 4, which is negative 24. For the a's, when I multiply a squared times a to the fourth, I add those. So I have a to the fourth. I said fourth, sorry. And then the q, I have q to the first times q to the fourth. That becomes q to the fifth. And we'll keep it there like that. I'll let you do the rest on your own. Great job. We'll see you next time.